Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Open House 2021. We are going to be talking today about the alumni experience for several graduates from Laurier's Bramford campus, and we're excited to have you along for the ride with us, whether you're here live right now or you're watching this on demand after the fact. My name is Craig Chips, and I'm the manager of Canadian Student Recruitment. I'm a Laurier alumni, so I thought it was appropriate that I could lead this alumni panel. Uh, and I want to introduce you to four very talented alumni we have here with us today. Before I do that, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that Wilfrid Laurier University and its campuses are located on the Haldeman Tract, territorial land of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people. This land is part of the Dish of One Spoon Treaty between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples, and it symbolizes an agreement to share, protect, and um, be stewards of our resources and not to engage in conflict. We recognize and honor and respect the traditions of these stewards of the lands and waters on which Laurier's campuses are now present. So uh, I'm not coming from Laurier today. I'm here uh, closer actually to London, Ontario, which is also sort of a group of another uh, group of in, Aboriginal people. So probably that rate relates for you as well. And so encourage you to continue to reflect on that. And uh, continue to get informed. So this is the middle of our first day of Virtual Open House, a series of events that run over the next two weeks. And I'm gonna drop a link into the chat so that you can make sure that you don't miss out on anything that's scheduled for the upcoming time. But other than the housekeeping stuff, I wanna jump right into the content. We've got four panelists here today. I'm gonna to have them introduce themselves and they are going to give you both the year they graduated, their program, their current job title, and just for fun, since we're virtual, where in the world they are coming from today. So I'm actually gonna start with Sarah. Okay, uh, my name's Sarah. Uh, I'm a graduate of the class of 2020, um, and I graduated from the social work program. Uh, currently, I'm working at Starbucks, just as I kind of find a more permanent social work uh, position. Um, and then I'm from Milton. So nothing too exciting, but. Good. Shannon, how about you go next? Yeah, sure. So my name is Shannon. I graduated in the class of 2018. My program was digital media and journalism, and I am coming from you today in Waterloo. And my current job title is I am a content creator at Hockey Canada. Fantastic. Anitra, how about you go next? Hi, everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, good evening. I am... Yeah, my name is Anitra Nichol. I graduated in 2019 criminology with a minor in law and society. And right now, my job is a full time student as I am in law school in London, England. So I'm coming to you from there right now um, at Queen's Mary University of London. So just to clarify that, what time is it in your part of the actual world right now? Anitra? It's 5.03. Okay, that's manageable. Yeah. It's less than yeah. the week hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Last, but by no means least, we have Oniqua. Hi, my name is Oniqua Kamaka. I'm a graduate of the class of 2020. I did law and society with minors in criminology and human rights. I currently work as a peer wellness supporter at Algonquin College, where I am a full-time student in human resources and business administration. Fantastic. So really great young selection. I'm class of 2005. Waterloo campus in kinesiology, um, but I've actually spent more time working at Laurier's Brantford campus than I have during my undergrad uh, at the Waterloo campus. So I'm kind of an honorary Brantford alumni, if you will, in that space. So we don't want to spend a lot of time necessarily talking about the nostalgia of it, um, of everything. We're going to be talking much more about, I think, our, what our audience is interested in is where you're at now and sort of the outcomes of a degree from the Brantford campus and your respective programs. So with that in mind, uh, we do have some questions that I've got lined up, but I also wanna invite the audience, if you have any questions for individuals on our panel or for the panelists as a whole, by all means use the question and answer feature uh, that exists. If it's directed at one individual, they may choose to type in their answers in the using the question answer. Uh, if it's broad panelists, I may choose to pull it out and ask it live to air so it's part of the recording. But by all means, this is about 
what you want to hear from this group of young, talented alumni more so than it is just what I want to ask them. But I do have some curious questions that I absolutely do want to ask. So let's jump right into it. Um, and I think that one of the questions that I think would be top of mind for a lot of parents and for career oriented students is what is this degree from Laurier going to get me on the back end? So if what were you, what would you say if you were to be asked this, is the transferable skill that you developed at Laurier as a student that you use in your career the most right now? So Shannon, let's be honest, you've got a cool job title and you're working you. <laughs> with a really cool organization. So why don't you lead us off here with the transferable skill that you developed. Maybe you already had it and you got better, or maybe you discovered it at Laurier that you use in your day job all the time. I would have to say it's asking questions. Uh, that definitely came out of the journalism side of the program. But in terms of my job now, when I'm creating either a feature story or I'm working on videos or I'm trying to create a social media hit after a game, it all comes down to asking the correct questions. And that can be traced back to the very first class I took at Laurier in JN 101, which is the journalism uh, first program class that you would take. And from that, I learned how to ask a good question and how to be specific so I could get the correct answers. So that would probably be my transferable skill. Fantastic. So Sarah, you're not in your career, but you are in the work world right now. Yes. So how about you? Um, so I think a really big thing for me, like I, I'm very extroverted, um, but I think through the different placements that I was able to do in my program, um, both at like a career center and a women's shelter, it taught me a lot about just like um, how to have those deep conversations with people and just really kind of develop those connections with them. Um, and so I've really been able to use that a lot at Starbucks, uh, just in kind of getting to know customers and the people that I'm working with. So been really good. So, I mean, ultimately, social work and being a barista, one thing that they have in common is like trying to make people feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Can you draw any parallels relative to like, yeah, I can see how like in these really sort of tiny roundabout ways, I'm almost a social worker for people when they're grabbing their necessary fuel to start their day. Obviously. Yeah, like I found, um, so I'm like there pretty much like 40 hours a week. So I've like really gotten to know our customers. Um, and, you know, I see a lot of the same people every day. And so I've really like, as I've gotten to know them, I can kind of pick out like if there's a change and if they might not be having the best day. Um, and so through that, like I've been able to have some really deep conversations with people um, and they've really opened up about like things they've been going through. Um, and I've just been able to be kind of that listening ear for a lot of people. So even though it's not necessarily what you think of as like a social work job, like there's definitely a lot of social work parallels that I've still been able to be practicing through Starbucks. Okay. Let's switch gears to our, to our two students on the panel. So Anitra, how about you in terms of a marketable skill? We talked about how that may actually relate to like the application process in terms of continuing study. That is 100% true. And to echo what Shannon said about asking questions, that and research skills, I think, are the number one skills I took away from Laurier. So obviously what Shannon said, but in addition to the research skills, that is something I use to highlight myself in my applications for law school. And I still continue to use um, while in law school. So in, in Laurier, I participated in two research competitions, which really developed these skills. Um, they were facilitated by the Criminology Student Association, and the other was facilitated by, I believe, the faculty itself, which was social science faculty, I believe. Mm -hmm. And both of those I was able to achieve a high ranking in, um, which allowed me to really just communicate these skills to the law school when I was writing my application. Um, in, in law school, we, we research all the time all the time. So it's really important to have that. And it was important for me to develop that. Fantastic. And then Oniqua, you're the best of both worlds. Student employee, but also full-time student. How about you? What yes. do you think is your most transferable skill? The ability to time manage and to communicate 
effectively with both my peers and with my professors. Um, while at Laurier, I was also a student employee with the Dean of Students Office. So working with such like a high priority and high like level job as a student really taught me how to manage my skills and to communicate effectively with all sorts of people. And now at in HR, we talk about memos, we talk about emails, and we talk about all of those things that were really big as a student employee at Laurier that I use every day. And in those introductory classes, it was like really important to understand how to send a professional email, because when you are in a business environment, having professional emails is crucial if you want to be taken seriously. And I learned those skills while at Laurier. Yeah. So interesting that both Anitra and Aniqua talked about, in some ways, things that were part of their university experience, but not necessarily directly oriented to their study in their program, um, especially Aniqua, when you talk about your job with the Dean of Students Office. Just curious, does anybody else have any experience of that where beyond sort of the degree, specifically the program, but rather an element of their Laurier experience in a more sort of whole way that really has been instrumental in the direction they're going career-wise or where you've ultimately landed up. That, like, definitely. Like, like <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna definitely. let you go ahead, you have the floor. Yeah, that definitely happened for me too. Uh, one of the ways I got a lot of my communication background was actually volunteering on campus. So whether that was within the students union or with my program where I was part of the student program association, all of those times I got to operate social media channels and kind of craft messages out to students to try to get them to come to events. And that's exactly what I do now in my job when I'm looking to craft a tweet or a Facebook post. It's the exact same skills and having that on my resume that I operated four to five different school accounts was really helpful in trying to get jobs. And Sarah, I mean, as an accredited social work program, the practicums are required, they're not optional. Uh, can you maybe tell us a little bit about your two experiences there and what that has kind of, in terms of what you're now looking for, mm -hmm. right? Once the pandemic has settled down and you can de be the in-person social worker that you want to be. Yes, indeed. So uh, my first placement that I did in third year, um, I worked in the counseling department of a women's shelter in Brantford. Um, and so, Every day, you know, I sat in on individual counseling sessions uh, that my supervisor ran. Um, and then I also helped to facilitate a couple of uh, group therapy classes. And so we did an abuse recovery program. Um, we did a couple others that I'm forgetting the name of right now. Um, but yeah, it was just a lot of working with these women and just hearing a lot of these stories and kind of uh, helping them come up with strategies to just kind of work through uh, the experience that they were living in. Um, and I also spent a lot of time in the women's shelter because uh, that's where the student office was. And so just kind of having conversations with the women who were living there um, and with their children and just kind of building those relationships of trust. Um, and then my fourth year placement, I was working at the Laurier Career Center. Um, and so my job more so focused on like editing resumes, uh, but even through that, like which you wouldn't necessarily think of like, oh, this is a social work thing. Um, but it was having those conversations with the people that came to see me um, and just kind of needing to get to know them in order to get the idea of like what kind of feel that they want to get into so I can help them to craft a resume that's going to get them what they're looking for. Um, and so both of those things have taught me a lot about just, you know, building relationships. They're both not necessarily things that I like want to pursue as uh, a career choice, uh, but it helped to kind of focus on the age group that I like working with, which is teens, um, which I'm currently doing with Starbucks right now, which is good, but yeah, just a lot about getting to know people. And Awesome. All right, so through the magic of the internet, we're joined by another panelist, um, and Sharia and I have not yet met, so Sharia, how did I do, first off, with the pronunciation of your name? That was good, actually. That was uh, absolutely accurate. It's Shreya, so you did okay. good. Okay, well, we'll take it. And uh, let's have you do the same introduction as the others did. Shreya, can you tell us about your program, year that you graduated, and your current job? And also, where in the world you're coming from today, since, you know. Sure. 
Uh, yeah, sounds great. Sorry, I'm late, first of all, everyone, uh, but thank you for having me. I graduated in 2018. I want to say 2018 it was, uh, and I graduated from the um, Honors uh, Health Administration Program at the Brantford campus. And from there, I actually worked as an administrative assistant at the Hospital for Sick Children. And uh, about a year and a half ago, I transitioned into a uh, clinical research project coordinator position within the same within the same hospital. And I'm speaking to you from Mississauga, where it's nice and sunny today. So yeah, we've got good weather today. Fantastic. So that's a very cool organization to be connected with. So sure, the one question that we really have kind of spent the most time on so far, so you haven't missed much, that's the okay. good um, What would you say relative to, from your, university, from your university experience, what's the experience that you've drawn on the most or maybe a transferable skill that you developed as a Laurier student that you're now using in your day job. And I mean, some diversity there too, right? In terms of the role of administrative assistant and now still in an administrative role, but a much higher level relative to this research. Sure, and uh, so I think the uh, the health administration program really set up us set us up in a really great way to be very resourceful, and I think that that's probably a very good transferable skill from role to role. Is you just need to be resourceful. You need to be able to be given a task and know, okay, who do I speak to? Where do I reach out? How do I get this done? And it wasn't just our program that taught us to be resourceful via the um, you know projects and assignments and essays and all of that fun stuff, whether it was accessing not just always um, journal articles, which is a pretty big part of being in the field of science, but also uh, government policies, websites, where to find all of that pertinent information. So uh, I think that was a great um, skill that was very transferable from, from my program. Fantastic. And Sharia is not the only person who joined us as we've gotten started. So if you were part of our live audience while we're recording this, I want to encourage you to take advantage of the question and answers widget at the bottom. If you have any questions for any individual members of our panel, for all the panelists as a whole, feel free to pop those in. We'll either get back to you in the Q&A with typed out answers, or I may actually pull your question onto live to the air so that we make sure it's part of the recording also. All right, so Sarah, I was gonna pick on you again, relative to sort of the introduction of this, because the reality of life after university is that things don't always go exactly according to plan mm -hmm. relative to what you thought it would look like when you were starting your program. Um, in your case, a global pandemic has definitely changed the change sort of what makes sense for you in the moment and has changed you sort of delayed, I guess, your priorities in terms of how important it is for you to get right into the field. So if we take that into consideration, can you tell us about, Sarah, your journey from high school you to where you are today? And would you say that it was a straight line or a winding path? And if it's the winding path, what were some of the twists along the way and how did you navigate? So multi-part question, but hopefully, uh, hopefully you caught the gist of it. Yeah, so um, I knew in, I wanna say grade nine or 10 uh, that I wanted to go into social work. Um, and so I kind of, from that moment started working towards that, looking at programs I wanted to go to. Um, and I like, uh, when I went to the university fair, that's when I really kind of started considering Laurier. Um, and I, the thing I think that really brought me to Laurier Brantford um, was that I really enjoyed that it was a direct entry program. So whereas other schools, you apply into a general social sciences program, and then you would apply into the School of Social Work. Um, with Laurier, as long as you were accepted into the program and kept up your average, um, you were in the social work program for the four years. Um, and I really enjoyed not having the stress of, oh, what if I, you know, don't make it still into my program in second or third year. Um, and I really love the idea of a smaller campus because um, I, again, am very extroverted. And so I wanted to make sure that I like really got to know my community, um, which I think I did a really good job of doing. Um, so yeah, so I went to Laurie Bramford, um, got my degree in social work. And then in fourth year, um, I had done uh, work with this company that does uh, leadership development training uh, all around the States. And uh, so I was asked to go help out with a trip they were doing in Florida. They were doing a big event for a Fortune 500 company. And because I have my American citizenship, it's easier for me to go and work down there. 
So I went down for the day, did uh, the conference with them. And then uh, that was right before COVID hit. So I thought I would potentially be doing more work with them after I graduated, um, just as like a fun thing to do. Uh, but then the border shut down. And so then I thought, oh, should probably figure out something else. And as everything was kind of shutting down, um, I wanted to make sure I had some steady employment uh, with the age group that I enjoy working with. And I thought, you know, I've got some friends who are working at the Starbucks and so I can work with teens and I have my health insurance and, you know, 40 hours a week. And so I'm enjoying it a lot. So I, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next. I'm still looking. Uh, but yeah, I've, so not necessarily the straight path I thought it was going to be directly into social work. Uh, but yeah, definitely still applying a lot of the skills that I learned in my program. Awesome. So Aniqua, you're on still on that student journey. You've just yes. changed to a post-grad program. How about you? Straight line, one path. What were some of the twists? How did you navigate? Um, so definitely not a straight line for me. Um, there's a lot of twists and turns. Uh, I, since I was eight years old, I'd wanted to be a lawyer. So I built my high school and all of my courses, my average, kept my grades up because I was really interested in being a lawyer. I joined the Laurier Sussex program in Law and Society, the Gateway. Um, and then I started doing work outside of just being a lawyer. And then I started looking at labor relations, um, unions, union relations, and how all of that works. Because Law and Society really does show us all of the, like the aspects of how law affects society and how like labor law affects working conditions. And I started like feeling really passionate about that. And then I worked with the Dean of Students as peer conduct. And I was like, oh, I really like policy. Like, I, I don't know if law is for me. Like, I don't know if this is what I really wanna do. And I found that HR and human resources was the closest thing to peer conduct that I could get because I loved it so much. And now I'm doing peer support and I'm like, which is also an aspect of human resources. So my line that started at eight for being a lawyer is now more developing towards human resource specialists. And so it was very like twisty and turny. So now I'm a student, who knows? Maybe I find like, maybe payroll is my thing rather than policy. So I'm like very open to all of the courses that I'm taking. Um, supply chain management, surprising to me, was something that I'm like, I really like as well. So I'm just like very open to everything as a student. So that's fantastic. My twisty so, journey journey. Yeah, no, but sort of, but never really losing sight of kind of that initial vision. Um, and, but being open minded. Um, yes. Go. I, I always sort of say this, that I can't think of a better place to figure out what you want to be than at a university. Whereas I think in high school, right, a lot of people work under the assumption that you need to have it figured out by grade 12 so that you can start pursuing that. Yes, I was very much so that person. Like I was like, this is the straight line that I'm going to go down and like I'm not going to stray from it. And then I realized that line isn't for me and it isn't going to make me happy. So finding a line in a new path that has the similar aspects is what's gonna like make me the happiest. And it's also gonna give me a job that I'm gonna be the most fulfilled in. So Anitra, you ended up where Aniqua thought she would be. <laughs> How'd you get there? I'm so glad you called on me because Aniqua's experience is exactly mine, but in reverse. So when I was in high school, um, you know, being like pressured to go into some university, I applied to all five for business administration programs. Lori was one of them, and I was rejected into every one, every single one, except, except um, uh, there was three that offered me conditional acceptances for Bachelor of Arts general programs. So I reviewed the three and I said, okay, I know I want to go to university and it's going to be one of those three but I knew I didn't want a general degree. I wanted to be passionate about one thing. So that is when I discovered criminology. I didn't go into my university career studying criminology, nor did I even know I was gonna become a lawyer. So when I looked at criminology, I was like, okay, you know, I can be a police officer. And then I thought, maybe I wanna be in the military. Maybe I wanna be a forensic invest investigator. I thought about all these things that weren't, you know, remotely close to law or being a lawyer. So, 
during my first um, year with Laurier, after I accepted for the criminology, I then discovered myself and discovered that I really do like the law, but it was only because Laurier honestly exposed me to that, that I knew that I found a passion. And as second and third year and fourth year developed, the passion got grew stronger. But when I initially came into Laurier, the path was not straight. Um, it was really nerve wracking. And I actually remember I did have a conversation with a Laurier admission representative who kind of coached me into the criminology route, what kind of career paths I could take. And that conversation really did narrow my vision to reject the other two offers that had given me acceptances to accept Laurier. So that was uh, really beneficial for me. And after that, the path became straight, but initially it wasn't straight at all. Very interesting. The parallels, but at the same time, like you say, like opposite starting point. Completely. So, so uh, Sharia and Shannon, as the uh, as the elders as the elder sort of people here that have been in the working world for the longest period of time, I'm sure that our audience would love to hear about your journeys. So, Shira, let's have it start with you. Sure. I think it's uh, I think it's actually funny that we're talking about these twisting turning paths because I'm actually back in school right now myself. Uh, I went to Laurier uh, and like Anitra, I was like, okay, well, what? You know, you're in grade 12, what are you going to do? They tell you, figure out your career. And at 18, 19, you have no idea what's going on. And so I was really lucky uh, that the Laurier uh, Health Administration Program was just such, a, had such a wide scope. There was also a component of HR. Uh, and so we did a post-grad certificate through the Conestoga College, which again, I think was a really unique feature offered just by uh, Laurier. And then as I was working in, in health administration at the hospital for sick kids, I really started to gravitate more towards uh, the research process and working within the community and within families. I felt that that's where you have the most impact. And, uh, and Nico mentioned being happy in your job and being fulfilled. And for me, um, as great as administration is, I really wanted to be uh, talking to the families, to the patients, to the community. And so uh, I went, I went, I moved into the clinical research coordinator position and now I'm back in school because I went I went down a more policy sort of route and now I'm going back to school for basic sciences to learn more about uh, cardiology, which is our field of research and uh, genetics and pe uh, pe pediatric disease. So back in school, very twisty turning, but I, that's just how it is sometimes, right? You know yourself better, you have more experience, you have more things to pull on and to say, I like this and I don't like this. And you know, this is how I wanna make my, my impact on the world. So whatever journey you have, as soon as, as long as you figure it out at the end, I think that's how, that's how it's meant to be. Awesome. Shannon, bring it home. Me, yeah. Uh, I had a few curves along the way too. So despite the fact that I work in sports media now, back when I was in high school, I wanted to be a meteorologist. I wanted to be a weather girl. So um, my whole plan was to take math and sciences and do like the weather network eventually one day. But what I ended up doing in high school is I decided to look at a job description for what I needed to get there so I could figure out university. And it just required a journalism degree. And I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe I don't need to do a math and science degree. Why don't I do journalism? And I'll open some more doors so I could do news, I could do sports, and I could do weather if I wanted to one day. So that's how I ended up going into Laurier's program. Again, as Sarah said, it was a, uh, it was a direct entry program, which was really important to me. I didn't want to reapply again after first year and have all that pressure on my grades. So as I was going through Laurier and writing stories, I actually got some opportunities to work at a few newspapers along the way. So I worked at the local Brantford Expositor between my first and second year or second and third year while I was still in school. I was actually working in the industry. So that just goes to show you how many skills I got from the program right away to be able to jump into the workforce like that. And when it came time to graduation, almost all of my classmates already had jobs lined up and I was a little hesitant about wanting to join the workforce right away. So I ended up doing a master's and then after that I went into the workforce. So I ended up starting as a freelancer at Sportsnet and I ended up doing some associate editing. Um, the one thing I found along the way, even though I did have some newspaper background, is that 
I didn't love it. It wasn't a passion of mine. I didn't look forward to going to work some days. And I realized the times I did look forward to it was when I was doing sports stories. And so I kind of combined my love of sports and watching hockey or baseball on TV. And that's how I ended up in sports journalism and Sportsnet reconfirmed that passion because I always loved going to work every single day. And earlier this year, I had an opportunity to uh, show up to apply to join Hockey Canada, which I absolutely jumped on. And the one thing that stood out to me in that job description was everything that they were asking for, I learned at Laurier. So back with video editing, but writing and communication, social media, I learned all of that in my degree. And I felt like the job was just perfect for me. And I've been in three months and still going strong. So still loving every work, uh, working every day. That's outstanding. Okay, so Shannon, we have to ask the question that's the elephant in the room. You work in sports. So who is the most famous person that you've met as a result of your career? Well, funny enough, you asked that. If it's not a person, but I was with the Stanley Cup yesterday, if that counts. Um, I, I mean, I feel like you just dropped the mic. Uh, so I've seen the Stanley Cup. Like I, I touched it yesterday. Um, the Larry OB Trophy. I also saw um, a few Sportsnet personalities. So like Tim McAuliffe, who's on Tim and Friends. I know him quite well. But if you're looking at athletes, um, I would have to say uh, the entire national women's team for Canada. I got to interview them in Calgary this summer. And let me tell you, as a fan who grew up watching all of these ladies on the ice, to be in the same room as them is incredible. It's, it's just, it's like an out of body experience. So, I mean, Marie Philippe Poulin, Sarah Nurse, Natalie Spooner. I love everyone on that team and being able to work beside them was really, really cool. And I get to see them in a few weeks too. So it's, it's really cool that they know who I am. That's definitely a, a pinch me moment in my job. For everybody else, I don't want you to feel left out. So if you've met somebody famous and let's even just, I'll open it up to the, like, not because of your job. I mean, Sarah, celebrities need Starbucks too. So maybe, maybe, right? But anybody else? If not, we can totally move on. I realized that was kind of a uniquely Shannon question, but there's no way that the, at least one of you wasn't thinking the same. Um, my, with my job, with uh, Pierce of Wellness Support, we do like um, education about uh, mental health and stuff. So okay. my boss and I worked with getting Pete Davidson on a Zoom call. I didn't meet him personally, but that was one of the things that was like really big. And I have like so many videos of him on like like computer screen. I was like, I can't believe we got this to happen. <laughs> but yeah, that was cool, what a cool accomplishment career wise. That's awesome. Yeah, that was fun. Okay. So I want to take it back to, uh, as we kind of wind down our time together. And I just want to say on behalf of the audience. I've been transfixed this entire time. Uh, so I hope everybody else who's watching this feels the same way, but I certainly have enjoyed myself. I wanna go like, back down memory lane with these final two questions for you all. And again, sort of last call for anybody who's watching this live, if you've got questions for a panelist, pop them into the Q and A. But I wanna ask, what's your most vivid Laurier memory? So this is not like, just because like relative to your career, whatever, but just that, that moment. And it might be maybe not even necessarily a positive memory. Um, maybe something, it was a stressful time, but sort of how you overcame that. Your most vivid Laurier memory. Because I, I know from experience that the half-life of your memories, once you actually cross the convocation stage and graduate, it's pretty quick. You forget a lot of it, which is why I didn't spend a lot of time asking you about your high school decision-making process. Because I just assumed that you forget a lot. Of it. But tell us your most vivid Laurier experience. Shreya, let's have you start this. All right, on the spot here. Um, I think, uh, so Laurie Branford, uh, and actually uh, Shannon, your background, the building is right there, RCW. I remember my group of friends that I made because it's a small campus, right? So you see the same people. And actually, Shannon, I don't know if you remember me, but I just saw you and I was like, I know you. I used to see you on campus all the time. Um, so you really get to know people. And my group of friends and I, completely oblivious to the fact that we were being obnoxious would just stand in the middle of RCW kind of blocking people and just chat for you know after class sometimes an hour two hours and it was just uh, it was really nice because 
they're lifelong friends and uh, we're still really great friends today. So that's definitely after every class, my vivid member memories of noxiously standing in the hallways in RCW, not even realizing we were blocking people's ways because we were so uh, just, you know, so into our conversations. Anitra, how about you? Well, I love Shreya's uh, response because similar to um, my building, which is the YMCA building, Shannon's building, there are so many buildings at Laurier Brantford where you can just go and chat with people. And now that I'm in school with COVID, I really miss that social aspect because not all of my classes are in person. In fact, less than 50% of them are. So when I was at Laurier, uh, especially Brantford being the campus, it's smaller than the Waterloo campus. There was so many opportunities to just get to know people, but not just your peers, your professors too. So the research and academic building, again, the RCW behind Shannon is the main building for lectures. And um, and just, just everything goes on in that building, the bookstore, the coffee shop. Um, uh, the printing center, like you name it, it's in that building mostly. So yeah, I really, really did enjoy that aspect, um, social interaction. So Nietzsche, retired backgrounds, you picked the YMCA, which I do not believe would have been open before you graduated, Shannon. No, that's actually why I put it. So, so it was open, but I only got to enjoy it for a year or so. Right. Yeah. So exactly. I just put it there for, for emphasis because it is a newer building and um, I guess Aniqua would have really enjoyed it in her final year. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's why I put it there because that facility was incredible. Like the pool, the, the gym, I, I was able to use the gym for I believe a semester and a half consistently. So that was a really, really cool experience. Um, and there's a study center actually in there as well, which I took advantage of. So yeah, it was a really nice experience. So for those that have graduated, or for the two of you who graduated after that, is there anything else about what's developed at the Branford campus? Because it's a young campus, right? We're getting close to celebrating 25 years. Um, and so the change is always constant. Is there anything other than the YMCA that you're low-key jealous of that's not a thing, or wasn't a thing when you are a student that's now a thing in Branford? I'd have to say one market, how that yes. building has really taken off. I mean, I remember, Back in the day, we would kind of do some events in there and it was just kind of empty space because we hadn't turned it into anything. And in my final year, and Andrea, I don't know if you went to this event, but they had a kickoff of kind of what it was supposed to look like inside the building. So I ended up walking around and looking at all the blueprints and wishing, huh, yeah, I wish I could use that. That would have been all nice. Things, so all the things we wouldn't have. <laughs> exactly. Same with the YMC egg. Saw that get built. So I really hope all of you on this call enjoy it. Um, enjoy it for me because <laughs> it's beautiful. I would love to use it. Okay. So back to the question at hand. Sarah, your most vivid Laurier memory. Yeah, I've been trying to like narrow it down, but honestly, like I genuinely enjoyed pro like every single moment at Laurier was just so fun. And like, uh, but I think honestly, the one that stands out most to me um, was my first year orientation week. It was uh, the final day. There's the Shinorama car wash. Uh, so it raises money for people living with cystic fibrosis um, and doing research for that. Um, and kind of like during a week, I hadn't really figured out if I was, you know, how I was feeling about being at school in a way um, from my parents for like, you know, the first time for an extended period of time. Um, and it was at that car wash that um, some other girls from my floor uh, in residence were also there. And we spent the day together and like my roommate hadn't gone. Uh, and so I was kind of hanging out with this group. And uh, that car wash was really what solidified for me that like Lori was going to be a place where I was you know, appreciated and seen and just uh, loved and just where I had a place to belong. Um, it was just so fun just working as a team to raise money. Um, and then I ended up actually moving in with the girls that were at that car wash um, and they became like my best friends. And I had like my one best friend, Katie, like I had every single class with her because we were in the same program and we were in all the same extracurriculars. Um, and it was, I think, really that car wash that confirmed for me that like I was gonna be okay in first year uh so yeah I was just it's really I love looking back at my time at Laurier and just like all the joy and the memory it brought me and, and another one of those roommates from that group worked for my team in student yeah. recruitment and admissions for most of her undergrad and we had her on doing some freelance work with us 
over COVID last year. So I can speak to the quality of the individuals that you met during oh, that around. Shannon, how about you? I'm going to cop out and I'm going to choose two memories because I can't. <laughs> Um, it's funny because when I saw everyone who's going to be on the panel, like Brantford is a smaller campus, but you get to know everyone really well. And I know like basically all of you on this call, <laughs> we all met at some point. Um, so the one memory that sticks out was from my orientation week. I was at the end of the week and I remember walking to class on my very first day. And you're always so nervous about who you're going to meet and who you're going to see. But I remember on that walk to class, at least six or seven people said hi to me and knew who I was already. And I think that just speaks so much to how this campus becomes family so quickly because you develop that environment and everyone knows you and you get to really feel like you fit in. Uh, the other one I would have to uh, put out there is I was involved in orientation week every single year after that. Um, and I was the pleasure of winning cheer off twice. So those two memories stick out. I cried both times. Um, but <laughs> if you know, if you come to Laurier, cheer off is a big deal. So it's a big bragging right. And to say I won it twice, once when I was in first year and once when I was a head icebreaker in my last year, I definitely cherish those memories. Perfect bookends. Perfect bookends. Aniqua, how about you? Um, kind of like uh, Shannon, I was a member of orientation week every single year since my first year. Um, the memory that stands out to me the most is my last orientation week as a head icebreaker where we had a clean sweep. We won Cheer Off, Shinerama, and The Week. And it was honestly, yes, I will carry that bragging right with me forever. Because once you're on Lori, like, you know, like, it's Cheer Off, Shinerama, like, all of it is just such a great time. And being a head icebreaker and working with all those people, being a part of the planning, everything is just, like, such a great feeling. And to, like, win it at the end and just that accomplishment the tears because the week itself is just so like amazing like it's so much fun and then we did it like kind of like a gender reveal so they just dropped balloons and just seeing the red balloons just fall and knowing that like all of your hard work that you put in and all of the work with the students and making their experience at or like orientation week like really paid off and it was just like such a great feeling and it like stays with me everywhere I go. And back to my first year of orientation week, like my two roommates and I did everything together from the first day when I was like, hey, what room are you in? To now like we, the one is engaged and we're planning her wedding. And like the relationships that you build at Laurier and the family that like you develop, you just like something you won't forget. Like, and Shannon, like, I know so many people on this call because of orientation week and because of, like, working, like, with student alumni, with Anitra, and then orientation week with Sarah and Shannon, and it's just, you know, like, you get to see so many people, and it's just, like, I have so many things, like, I could talk for hours about all the, like, fun things and the memories I have at Laurier, so Fantastic. those are the two. <laughs> So <clears throat> this is going to be my last question. So we're going to, we're going to call it a day on this one. And again, on behalf of everybody watching, uh, we really appreciate your time, all five of you, and just giving us sort of the great perspective that students that are in the, are right on the edge of making this huge decision, I think are really hungry for us. So, um, and it's really great to have such strong examples of what's possible. Um, and how to continue to unpack those possibilities even after you cross the stage of graduation. So this is going to be your kind of final, final thoughts on this one. If I could give you a time machine and you could go back to your grade 12 self, what advice would you give yourself and why? I'm going to go with Anitra to lead this one off. This is a hard one. This is a difficult one, but um, it actually stems from what a lot of us have said today. And it's to be happy in the decision that you're making. Just trust yourself and be happy. And as all of us have talked to, have uh, spoken about today, life changes and just take life as it comes, be happy. So in grade 12, I definitely would, would want to just enjoy the moment of grade 12 a little bit more because I was really stressed about the university decision. 
And just finally, just be confident in the decision I'm making. There's no wrong choice in life. You just have to accept what things, what life brings you and just be happy. You know, it's, it's a journey. And as we all spoke about today, it's not a straight path. Shreya, how about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to jump off of what Anitra just said. I think in grade 12, there was such a sense of uh, finality to what you were doing. Like if you picked this program, you were going to be, a, you know, a lawyer or a journalist or a meteorologist or whatever it was. And that's not the case. So I think my advice to my grade 12 self would be just relax. It's going to be OK. It's going to unwind exactly as it's meant to unwind. And just enjoy the process. You'll figure out where you're meant to go. Nothing is final. Uh, everything's everything can change exactly as you want it to change. So there is no, um, there's no pressure. Sarah, over to you. Yeah, I think kind of echoing uh, what's previously been said, but just um, trusting in yourself and knowing that like you have the best idea of what is going to work out best for you. Um, and just kind of being bold in that um, and know it, like not working yourself up about um, having everything happen a certain way. Cause as we've seen, everything can kind of change in an instant. Um, but yeah, just trusting yourself and yeah, that's about it. Fantastic. Shannon and Aniqua, does either one of you really want to go last? Cause I'm going to, this is, as a head. I can go last. That's fine. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead, then Aniqua, I think you just got volunteered to go next, and then Shannon, you can wrap, we, you can wrap us up. Um, I would tell myself in grade 12, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, it's all going to work out, like stressing out about every exam, stressing out about every mark. Um, it, your path is going to lay itself out, and being hard on yourself isn't going to make it any easier and it's not going to make it any like quicker like just take deep breaths and like know that the path that's going like wherever you're going to end up is wherever you're going to end up and being happy in that is and being bold in that is very important love the use of word bold on that I respect that I respect the heck out of that in that context Shannon final thought all you. right Everyone said such great advice. So I'm going to take a different route. Um, one thing I'll say is that our professors are so approachable. Do not be afraid to go up and speak with them. I know kind of when I was in high school, I had this idea of like, oh, they're going to be so strict and they're going to do this and that. They're not. They're, so, they're human. They're approachable. So definitely be free to go up to say hi to them. And on a completely different note, I would tell myself to learn how to cook more meals um, learn a few other things to cook. Uh, I survived off of rice for way too long. Um, so I would definitely put a few more meals in my repertoire so that when I was in the residence kitchen, I had a few more options up my sleeve. Fantastic. So that wraps us up for this again. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our live audience. Uh, I dropped in the chat link back to the Laurier virtual experience where you can dig into more ways to stay connected with us like our private Discord server, all of the other events that are happening as part of Virtual Open House over the next two weeks. And uh, we're wrapping up actually today relative to all the activities, but there is an open-ended Ask the Experts where you can drop any and all of your questions and answers over the next hour. So that session begins at two o'clock. Uh, so make sure you check that out if you are interested. Panelists, once again, much appreciation. Everyone uh, stay well, and most importantly, Stay golden.